Hello, it is uh, August 11th. We are 11 days late for the August shop tour 2013. Um, has to do with mad rush before vacation, vacation followed up immediately by Fine Woodworking Live. So just got home today from Fine Woodworking Live and wanted to show where the shop stands. Though I haven't done much to the shop in August, I have gotten quite a bit done in the shop since the last video in July. So let's just take a quick tour through. Here you can see my racks that are traditionally in this back corner. You see in the back right there, there's this concrete step. These cabinets used to be in a rack on top of that step and those next to it. I took all that apart when I put the floor in and they've not been properly put back together. I'm not going to put them in the racks they were in. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how they're going to go back, but they haven't gone back yet. In front of them, as always, is the pile of stuff that I'm in the middle of using for the treehouse. Um, my festool stuff, my table saw, crap on the table saw, nothing too exciting there. Though what you see here, um, this is going to be my clamp rack. I need to make a couple of clamp racks. Um, this plywood piece is going to go on the wall. These pieces of five quarter will go like that. And then in this gap here, I can slide a bunch of clamps in. I think it holds six clamps deep. I was working on it very briefly before vacation. It's been a little over a week since I touched it. I think it's six clamps deep. But that's going to go back there above the window. That's where that'll fit. Um, as we come back here, not much has changed yet. There's my lumber rack. And there's my sliding tool cabinet and the bastard tool cabinet right where they are. Uh, hopefully by the next video, the lumber will be moved to the opposite side. And these cabinets will at least be moved up the wall and maybe in a new spot. But I haven't quite figured that out yet. Uh, back here, we want a little bit of space because I have given away my old Jet 6-inch joiner, which used to tuck in here, at least during all the shop construction. It didn't have a real home, so it, it slid in behind the table saw. That bucket there is all my table saw accessories, which are spilled out onto the floor because I also had my joiner accessories in there and when I was given the joiner away, I dug through it and had to pull out my joiner accessories. So I haven't put that mess back yet. Here's my bucket full of clamps like I usually have and the, the planer on its stand. Come back here, the drill press and the miter saw, nothing really has changed there. Uh, and there's my Festool stuff. But as we come through here, you may notice that the one remaining metal cabinet that I had here, metal shelf unit, right, it wasn't a cabinet, it was just shelves, is gone. When I first moved in, I had six of them, and it was my goal to get all of them out and everything off the floor onto wall-mounted cabinets instead of floor-standing shelves. So, um, you see these new shelves I put along the back wall, they help in that goal, but if I come around behind the bench, uh, there's still, you know, all my clamps are there, and there's still a bunch of stuff on on the bench itself. So I, I'm not quite at the point where everything is off the floor, but I don't have the shelves anymore, so that's kind of motivating me to get stuff off the floor. Um, here you see two pieces of Kindorf or Unistrut. Um, it's a U-shaped metal bracket with perforations, and these uh, just curl back into each other. Mechanical guys use it. You can hook things into it and mount conduits and things to it. But these are thin ones. They're seven eighths of an inch thick I think and because it's fairly heavy gauge steel and it comes in and it curls again they're they're pretty stiff so what I'm thinking of doing is putting them underneath these shelves and possibly eliminating this third bracket or maybe just in conjunction with the brackets because right now this is just three quarter inch OSB it's scrap I had left over it's not the strongest thing in the world so I need to cut those to length and run one under the front and one under the back for these shelves um, Let's see, we'll turn around this way. As we come around, you see in this wall, um, this wall is done. So, it has been painted white. The electrical circuits have been finished. At least the 110 electrical circuits have been finished. And you can see, I have color-coded the outlet plate covers. Because I want to be able to visually tell which ones belong to which circuits. So, I have three circuits along the wall. Which is why you see blue outlet covers, white outlet covers, and green outlet covers. They're not quite perfectly distributed symmetrically in terms of one color, the next color, the next color. Uh, there's a couple spots where the same colors against each other, but 
without too much work, no matter where I am, either one of these mid-level ones or one of those lower ones, um, I can reach an outlet. And it is such a joy to be able to plug in multiple tools, run multiple tools at once. I can run my table saw and my dust collector right now. It's it's just it's a revelation. I, I, it's fantastic. Uh, I was planing down some some really thick uh, oak in the in the planer, and it didn't stall because it actually had 20 amp power. It, it it's very nice. Um, what we're looking at now, though, is my new joiner. Uh, I had a Jet six inch, their deluxe model that everyone seems to have. It has the wheels on the side. Very nice unit. And what we have here is an old Delta eight inch. The pot belly. Uh, I believe it traces back to 1953, maybe 52, 54. It's that kind of early to mid 50s vintage. Um, what you're looking at on the top is dust from working on it, not actually rust. Um, top could use a new new waxing, but uh, it was in very nice shape, though. It's painted, been painted blue. The whole unit should be this gray, which was the original Delta color, and it was painted blue. So. For the time being, I'll certainly live with it, and I know me, I will probably never bother to repaint it, because it works now. <laughs> um, so, that's the joiner. I have a little bit of adjustment to do with this front bed. It's ever so slightly out of coplanar, but as long as I don't take too many passes, I'm not making too much of a wedge. The back table is perfectly aligned to the knives, which are 90 degrees to the fence, so everything from the cut beyond is nice and square. It's just if I keep making passes on the front table, it's off relative to the knives. So I do ultimately create a wedge. Uh, but I'm gonna. I just picked up actually when I was in Five One Working Live. I ordered a large, long straight edge to kind of tweak that and get that set up. So that's a an upcoming project. Come along the wall. Here's the benchmark table, vacuum, bandsaw. Actually, at the bandsaw, I'd been kind of at a a stalled point about the bandsaw. I couldn't decide whether I wanted to try to tune this one up or just bite the bullet and buy a new one. Because um, I'm really not pleased with this saw. I think, it's a, I think it's a piece of crap, at least using it so far it's a piece of crap. But while at Fine Woodworking Live I took Michael Fortune's bandsaw class. It was very similar to the class he taught at Woodworking America two three years ago. Um, and if you haven't had the chance to see Michael Fortune's bandsaw stuff, you really need to check it out. Um, so after watching his class, I figured I'm going to roll the dice and invest a little bit of money into this one and see if I can get it working. So while I was there, I ordered the Craig fence because the original rigid fence is just, I can't stand it. Um, and then I'm going to work on, on tuning it up and I got to buy a new blade for it and probably new tires. And then I'll see if I can get this thing working and all said and done. I don't know, probably I'll have invested about 200 bucks in it, which if it fails, is $200 I wish I hadn't, but still it's a lot cheaper than a new saw, so hopefully I can get this thing up and running. Uh, what you're looking at there, that beautiful piece of professional grade furniture, is one of the two Modern Woodworkers Association Fine, uh, fine Woodworking Live Build-Off 2013 entries. I wasn't there on Friday night for the build-off, but... The guys were able to assemble two four-man teams to compete in the build-off. So we, uh, the MWA, had eight guys in the competition, two full teams out of a total of eight teams. So we dominated with the most guys on the floor, though neither one of our chairs placed. Uh, but this chair was a little bit smaller than the other chair. The other guys made an Adirondack chair, and it fit in my truck. So I took it home. It's a little wobbly, but for building it with nothing but a jigsaw, and a screw gun and an hour and a half from being told build so something to sit on and having to be finished I think it came out really nice and the guys should be proud of themselves um, so I'm gonna just throw a couple more screws into it so it doesn't wobble so much and it's gonna go up in the treehouse I figured we'll, we'll put it to some use so well done guys and uh, the, here the last thing you can see since the last time I did a shop video is here you can see my flooring I emptied the whole shop a couple weeks ago and I put in a new floor and I put everything back which is why it's still not 100% put back together so you've got the original concrete floor here you've got 2 inch 60 psi extruded polystyrene insulation uh, typically the extruded polystyrene the blue or pink board Dow board is sometimes called uh, Dow's a brand that makes it 
Typically, you'll see it has wooden sleepers running 16 to, two, 20, 16 to 24 inches on center. I did not go with sleepers because the normal extruded polystyrene that you can get at a big box store is only 20 PSI. Um, commercially in roofing, we often use higher PSIs to handle the compressive strength of what's going to go on top of it. So this is 60 PSI insulation, um, and between it and the three-quarter OSB that is installed directly on top of it, I figured that was capable of handling the point loads. It's only a couple weeks old, but so far it seems to be working fine. And just w walking on it, it's, it's a much nicer surface to work on. It feels warmer, it's a bit softer than the concrete. It, so far, I'm loving it. It's only a couple weeks old, haven't done any real projects working on it yet, but I think, I, I think it's going to be very nice. And I've been in the shop for four, almost five years. I've never noticed the slightest issues with moisture, so I didn't bother with a vapor barrier. But you'll see I did air seal the extruded polystyrene, so there's great stuff expanding foam along the wall, and every joint has an application of caulking to air seal the whole thing. This section of the front, I still have to make a threshold. And actually, if you look up there in the lumber rack, those two 2 by 10s those are for the threshold. So that's something I have yet to do, and once I put the threshold, I'm going to put a rabbit in the back of the threshold and drop the last piece of OSB and it'll rest in the rabbit and connect it here. And then all of this OSB is just fastened right through the XPS into the concrete with tap cons. I didn't do anything to level the floor. It's a garage floor. It's mostly level, but this new floor does mirror any inconsistencies with the old floor. Um, I had a day and a half to do it by myself. and. Since I wasn't doing sleepers, I didn't go crazy making it a perfect finished floor. But I never had any real issues with the unevenness of the floor before, and I don't perceive I will have any now. It's going to be about the same. So that is the shop tour for August of 2011. Quite a bit done since the last one. Mostly the completion of this wall, the painting of the wall, which I didn't even mention before, and the installation of the floor. Uh, hopefully when we do the September shop tour, I don't think you'll see any huge projects done, but hopefully you'll see the lumber moved over there, these racks moved up, and the general space back here cleaned up and organized a little bit more. For years now, I've been working with all my tools shoved against this side to allow the wall to be worked on, and pulled tools out for a project, put them back when I was done. Now I'm finally gonna start setting up tools. Another thing I'm gonna do is mount the miter saw, and I think I'm just gonna temporarily mount it, live with it for a bit, and then design the finish table, but the miter, the miter saw will go right there where my fingers are, and this faux window, essentially, there's a header up there to recess the wall, that's clear in space for the miter saw, so I can mount it that much closer to the wall and win those extra couple of inches of space. Uh, but anyway, that'll be in the next tour. So for now, hope your shop is looking good too, and we'll talk to you